Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I want to prove a fun theorem all to do with Lebesgue integrals and Lebesgue integration. Okay, so if you've not seen Lebesgue integration before, I have to apologise because I'm not sure how much of this video will make sense. Uh, but one thing I've learned from having taken a Lebesgue integration course and taking a bunch of other courses as well is that firstly it's really, really cool, but also it's really fundamental to a bunch of pure maths courses and especially things like um, sort of pure probability or the theory of probability and things like that. So if you do have the chance to study Lebesgue integration in any detail, I recommend you do so. Anyway, let me stick the theorem I'm going to be proving today. Uh, we have a function from the reals to the real, which is Lebesgue integrable. And we have this subset uh, E of the reals, which is a measurable set, a Lebesgue measurable set. And we suppose that f of x is bigger than zero for any x in the set E. So f is restricted to E is strictly positive then I claim that the integral on e of f of x dx is bigger than zero if and only if mu of e is greater than zero, i.e. the measure of e is bigger than zero. Now this is kind of intuitive. If we have a function that's positive, we kind of expect for its integral to be positive. But of course, we've got to prove that rigorously. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so we, this is what we want to prove, that the integral of f is bigger than zero if and only if mu of e, so the measure of e is bigger than zero. Now, one direction is quite straightforward, so I'm just going to do that first, and that's going from left to right. So if we have that the integral on e of f of x dx is bigger than zero, then the measure of e must be bigger than zero, and I want to just prove that by the contrapositive. So if this doesn't hold, then this doesn't hold. Okay, so if mu e, or so if mu of e, is not bigger than zero, well then because of course this thing here is non-negative, that follows that mu of e equals zero. Okay, but the integral uh, of anything against uh, a null set, so that tells us e is null, so the integral of anything against a null set is gonna be zero, so that means that the integral on e of f of x dx, this guy here is just zero. And of course that is not bigger than zero. Okay, so we've got if not at the right-hand side, then we get not the left-hand side, and that's sort of the contrapositive argument. So that tells us that if the integral of f is bigger than zero, then the measure of e is also bigger than zero. Now we want to prove the reverse direction, so it's going from right to left. So if the measure of e is positive, then the integral is positive. Let me clean, <clears throat> let me clean up the whiteboard, and we'll continue. Okay, so now what we're going to do is assume that the measure of e is positive, and what we want to show is that the integral along e of f of x dx is strictly positive. Okay, and to do that we're going to introduce some new sets which I'm going to define en. Okay, so en is defined to be the set of x in e for which f of x is bigger than 1 over n. Okay, and this is for n a positive integer, a natural number. Okay, so en is uh, these sort of collection of sets, one for each natural number n, and uh, they have the property that each of them is a subset of e, and they contain the elements of e, which uh, when you apply f to it, you're going to get some number bigger than 1 over n. Okay, so firstly, clearly en is a subset of e for all n, but that implies that the union of n being greater than or equal to 1 of en is a subset of e. But e, if we take any element in e, so let x be in e, then we know that f of x is positive. So that was one of the things we had about f, that f is positive on e. But then we can find, because f of x is positive, we can find some big capital N. So there exists capital N such that f of x is bigger than 1 over N. Okay, but then of course that implies that x is in the union of N being greater than or equal to 1 of E N. Because of course x is in E sub capital N. So e, uh, x is certainly going to be in this union. So what that tells us is that e is a subset of the union of the ens, and thus we have equality. So e equals this set here. Now, uh, what we want to do is use this uh, and use the fact that mu e is positive to show that the integral of f is also positive. 
Okay, so we've deduced that E is equal to this set here. Let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so we've shown that E is equal to the union of these guys here. Now what we're going to do is just use uh, take the measure of both sides. So we have that mu E, and we know this guy here is positive. This thing here is equal to mu of the union. Okay, but uh, a standard property of uh, the measure is that this guy here is less than or equal to the sum, the infinite sum of these measures, like so. Okay, so we have that the infinite sum of each of the ENs, the measures of ENs, is strictly positive. But because, of course, each of the mu's are non negative, this tells us there exists some, let's call it capital M, such that mu of EM is positive. Because otherwise, if this didn't happen, then each of the mu. Mu en would always be zero, so this infinite sum on the right hand side would be just the infinite sum of zeros, which is zero. So we'd have that zero is strictly less than zero, which is a contradiction. Okay, so there exists some m such that mu em is bigger than zero. But now, if we just look at what the integral of e, uh, integral of f is uh, on e, let me just squeeze it in here. The integral on e of f of x dx. Okay, well this is going to be greater than or equal to the integral on em because remember em is just a subset of e and f is uh, non-negative so uh, you're not going to have any weird sort of minus signs in there okay so this thing here is the integral of or bigger than or e equal to the integral uh, along em of f of x dx okay but we know on em f of x is at least 1 over m that kind of comes from this property here so this thing here is at least uh, the integral on em of 1 over m dx but this is just precisely 1 over m times mu em okay so we've got that the integral uh, along e of f of x dx is at least mu em divided by m but notice both of these things here are positive numbers because remember mu em, just from the line above, is strictly positive, and obviously dividing by a positive number is going to keep it positive. So this thing here is strictly greater than zero. So the integral uh, along e of f of x dx is strictly positive, and that proves our theorem. So let's put a little box just in the corner there. Okay, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, Lebesgue integration is something that's kind of advanced and only kind of taught in a maths course at uni. Um, so I apologise if you haven't seen Lebesgue integration before. But again, if you have, if you do have the chance to see or take a course in Lebesgue integration, I highly recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.